Our theme for tonight's concert is Come Worship Christ King. And I've subtitled our exhortation for tonight The Babe in the Manger Rules. The Babe in the Manger Rules. Christmas is a celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in many pictures of Christmas, we see Jesus as a little baby lying in a manger. But tonight I came to give you a word only through this Christmas season, but throughout your life, that the babe that was born in the manger is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he rules in the affairs of men. And he rules as Especially in affairs. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that in the context of the birth of Jesus Christ, the nation of Israel was under Roman colonial rule. And it is in that context that in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, we read that in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Shall we pray? Almighty and everlasting God, we acknowledge that in time, in history, you became man in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we celebrate that birth, which brought us new birth and new life. That we, the sons and daughters of men, shall become the sons and daughters of God. Lord, tonight, as we reflect on this special event in history, speak to us and help us see that the babe in the manger rules. In Jesus' name, amen. We live in turbulent times. The whole world is in turmoil. We hear of wars and rumors of wars. There's famine and earthquake. And the latest is that President Trump has declared Jerusalem the capital of the nation of Israel. <laughs> now that means forces in the Middle East are going to gather and we'll hear of somebody has described it as the oxygen for renewed violence in the Middle East. I've just come from Mozambique on a travel and I've just seen how now when you travel you have to take off your jacket and you have to take off your shoes and you have to take off your belt. <laughs> and I asked the, 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 the ladies and gentlemen at the airport checking those and said, what if my trousers is loose? <laughs> Don't tell me what happens. <laughs> the world is in crisis and you may be facing personal crisis. And it was in the midst of a situation of external rule over God's chosen people that Jesus Christ our Lord was born in that contest Augustus Caesar the ruler of the Roman Empire issued a decree the decree was in consonance with the practice of the Roman Empire that every 14 years they took a census in Ghana here we take a census every 10 years in the Roman era Every 14 years, they took a census. 
And when the census was to be taken, every person was supposed to return to their hometown to be registered according to their family line, to show their profession, to register the properties they had, so that Rome could decide how to tax the people and also how to conscript people into the army of Rome. And so Caesar Augustus, in his position as king and ruler of the, of the civilized world of the time, was doing what was normal and what was in consistent constitutional powers for him to do. Friends, tonight I want to tell you that men may do what men may do, but men do not hold a sway over your life. Caesar Augustus felt he was exercising his political prerogative as the ruler of the Roman Empire. But within the doings and the activities of the decrees of Rome, God was overriding and overruling. At this point in history, Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, pregnant with this strange and miraculous child, was in Nazareth, in Galilee with Joseph, the foster father of Jesus Christ. And for all intents and purposes, Mary and Joseph would have rested in Nazareth and awaited the birth of this babe in the womb. But the decree of Rome forced Joseph to move Mary and the baby in the womb 80 kilometers southward to Bethlehem in Judea. French, Rome had done what Rome could do to give a decree that needed to be obeyed by all. But God Almighty was doing something else. Because it had been prophesied by the prophets and the servants of God. That this special son of a woman to be born to bring deliverance to humanity would not be born in Nazareth, but would have to be born in Bethlehem. So the decree of Caesar comes to fulfill that which God had intended. That the birth of life will be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread. God was manipulating the affairs of humanity to bring about his intention. That the son of God will be born in no other place but in Bethlehem of Judah. And so this couple moved to this location where they were to fulfill the mandate of Rome. Because the prophet Micah had said in Micah chapter 5 verse 2, he said, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. The babe in the womb of Mary was not a little infant to be born, but God Almighty, the one whose origins are of ancient times. Joseph was a man and had done what a man should do. He had betrothed a young virgin to marry. But God was ruling and overruling in the affairs of men and sent his angel to bring a message to Mary. Behold, thou shalt conceive and give birth to a son. And God overruled the schemes and plans and thoughts of Joseph and brought about the birth of a virgin's son. Because God had predicted in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, when man had fallen into sin, God said to the woman, I will put enmity between you, to the serpent he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. 
He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The declaration of the gospel in the first instance of scripture, what the, what the theologians call the proto-evangelium, the first announcements of the gospel, that a special human being shall be born. It shall not be the product of a man and a woman. It shall be the product of a woman only from human perspective. And this special human, not an angel, but a human, shall strike the head of the serpent. That means he shall destroy the authority of Satan. Friends, and I... A son was born to a virgin called Mary that the power of Satan over your life will be broken. Amen. This babe who was born in a manger was born to rule in your life that you might no longer be under satanic authority. He struck the head of the serpent. He destroyed the authority of the devil. Oh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 it says on that cross he disarmed Satan and made a public show of him Satan has no more power than you the babe in the manger rules give God praise in the house ah oh, may the babe in the manger rule in your affairs may the babe in the manger rule in the affairs of your family may the babe in the manger rule in the affairs of this nation May the baby in the manger come once again as the king of kings and the lord of lords. And may every knee bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In those days the slogan in the Roman Empire was Caesar is Lord. <laughs> and when Christianity started the, the early believers counted that declaration and their declaration was Jesus is Lord. When you see somebody ride on his vehicle, Jesus is Lord, pray that they will understand. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, God has given Jesus Christ of Nazareth a name that is above every name, that when his name is mentioned, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Friends, we got something that money can't buy. We got something that education can't give. We got something that tribal background can't give. It is life everlasting under the rulership of the babe in the manger. As we celebrate Christmas, I invite you to that place of liberty in Christ. I invite you to that place where you find yourself fulfillment in God who made heaven and earth. I invite you to that place where we subject our life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For behold, he comes riding on the clouds. Very soon we shall hear the trumpet sound. Behold, the King comes. May the babe in the manger rule in your life. May the babe in the manger rule in our lives. May the babe in the manger bring his peace into your heart. Father in heaven, we give you praise and thanks tonight. Oh, how we celebrate the babe in the manger. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He rules and never rules in the affairs of men. We subject ourselves tonight to him who is coming. And we all say, come quickly, Lord Maranatha. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. amen.